are these people? As you covered in our last segment, things have been happening since 1948. You remember what happened then, right, Kyber? Um, the Nakba. Yeah. Um, the Nakba. Which you you do know what that translates to, right? Um, Catastrophe. That is correct. Um, describe the events of the 19, 1948 Palestine War. You know, pretty terrible. It's like they're trail of tears pretty much right yeah. um cool so just to give some context so jonathan cook another indie media award honoree over at consortium which in and of itself is a network that is indie media awarded um but he writes israel's been like this since 1948 we have been lied to for decades around about the creation of israel writes jonathan cook it was born in sin and continues to live in sin. Um, so he writes, Israel's army new displacement order from northern Gaza. That headline about yet another Israeli operation to ethnically cleanse the Palestinians in the tiny besieged and utterly destroyed enclave of Gaza was published Thursday in Middle East Eye. When I began studying Israeli history more than a quarter of a century ago, people claiming to be experts proffered plenty of excuses to explain why Israelis should not be held responsible for the 1948 ethnic cleansing of some 750,000 Palestinians from their home, what Palestinians call their Nakba or catastrophe, right? And we've covered a bit of this, I think. Let me go to Twitter for a moment. Um, but sure, we'll go here. But we've covered this particularly among the settler movement, correct, Care Bear? Um, you remember that segment, right? I think it's liberation. Yeah. Yes. Um, so let me find that on mine. Because we had Vanessa Beely on recently. And we had a bit of a back and forth on Twitter. Yeah, here it is. So... This lady, right? Um, Daniel Weiss, you remember Weiss. her? Um, yeah, I, <laughs> so. I want to be nice. I want to be nice. I was going to say something not so nice. This land was promised to the Jews by God. This. I mean, that's how they feel, right? Vanessa put this up. By God. So... We'll, we'll get into a bit, but... Um, so where do you think our event in the Gaza Strip is going? Where it's going? My opinion, in less than a year, there will be settlers in Gaza. Why do you think so? Because I have a sense of the historical rhythm... The moment Prime Minister Netanyahu said that there would be a long-term military presence, I said, this is it. This is an invitation to the dance. And he truly made an invitation for us to the dance. I'll stay and you will use the expertise. I'll call this copy-paste. What we did in the West Bank and also in the Golan. This land was promised to the Jews by God. Right? So, you know, I mentioned that, uh, that we covered this a while ago, right? Um, yes. So, and you brought a New Yorker article, which I find funny. Um, <laughs> right. You know, right, she was, she said some ridiculous stuff in there. That's why I bought it. Vanessa saying Weiss has been working on the theft of Palestinian land for more than 50 years, beginning in the seventies with Ariel Sharon, Right. And was also neighbors with Smotrich, right? So, you know, for decades, Daniel Weiss has been one of the leaders of Israel's settlement movement. Weiss became involved in settlement politics in the wake of the 1967 war in the early 70s. So, you know, neighbors with Smotrich, bezazzle, right? Bedazzled Smotrich is here, you know? So, which... You know, talking about Ariel Sharon, right? And I replied, well, shit really does stick together, huh? 
Um, so they've been at this for a minute, as we are about to find out. Um, so again, what Palestinians call their Nakba or catastrophe, correct? So point number one, I was told most Israelis were not involved and knew nothing of the war crimes carried out against the Palestinians during Israel's establishment. Two, I was told that Israelis who did not take part in war crimes like Operation Broom to expel Palestinians from their homeland did so only because they were traumatized by their experiences in Europe. In the immediate aftermath of the Holocaust, these Israelis assumed that were the Jewish people to survive, they had no alternative but to drive out the Palestinians in mass. Okay, stop. No, stop right there. So this is the kind of bullshit that I've yes. been hearing online. And this uh, yes. is also the kind of bullshit that I was hearing today, like in terms of Palestinians and like some, I, again, like, and I'm, look, Ados and FES, you can come for me. I don't really give a fuck at this point. You can come for me all you want. But a lot of this bullshit is kind of what I think you're kind of starting to create dissent online and otherwise. Yep. My thing is this. If your liberation it depends on the oppression of other people... Yeah, you're fucked. You're fucked. Yeah. So I... I and like... And again, this is kind of like this victim mentality of like... Israelis were being like, well, you know, well, we will... Like we went for the Holocaust, so we deserve a bit, and so we're gonna kick out. We're gonna kick out the people who were living here way before you. Like in order of a matter of survival, that's a whole cr cr a bull to me. Uh -huh. Like so, <laughs> like it does not make any sense that you're going to torture and oppress other people for essentially your safety. Yep. Like, how selfish do you have to be? Where have we heard and that before? Every, right. And to black people who are going to put on that stance too, like, fuck you all, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Because, you no, you got, no, black people especially should know better. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not about like, because I'm hearing like, oh, well, you know, we should only care about our own. Yes, yes, you should prioritize your own people. But that doesn't mean you have to shit on others too while you're trying to get the freedom that you're trying to seek for your damn selves. Yeah. Like that's the difference. You can you 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 can you can sympathize with uh, oppressed people, but not shit on other ones, if that makes any sense. Well, there's a reason why classically, allegedly, the reason that we're not supposed to torture our enemies is so that our enemies don't torture us. Right? Because we're selfish like that, right? Sure. But it still applies, right? If you don't want the reason why you don't want suffering done to other people is so that suffering isn't done upon you. So if we're going to talk about, you know, what you should do for your people, you know what I mean? Like, right. but um... there's more. Number three, from others, I was told that no ethnic cleansing had taken place. Colin, it never, never happened. She even got me on camera. Um, but the Palestinians had simply fled at the first sign of conflict because they had no real historical attachment to the land. I think you've heard that bullshit too. Yes. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So we're just, we're laying out the bullshit. Wait, there's one more. Four. I was told that Palestinian displacement wasn't an unfortunate consequence of a violent war in which Israeli leaders had the best interests of Palestinians at heart. The Palestinians hadn't left because of Israeli violence, but because they had been ordered to do so by Arab leaders in the region. So we're playing the blame game now. Right. Right. So in fact, the story went, Israel had pleaded with many of the 750,000 refugees to come home afterwards, but those same Arab leaders stubbornly blocked their return. All right? This bullshit. Right? Which, even if that were true... Uh-huh. Even if that was true, what's the excuse of Israel not allowing them to come back safely now? Now. So... Every one of these claims was nonsense, directly contradicted by all the documentary evidence. Very simple. 
That should be even clearer today as Israel continues, as you were saying, the ethnic cleansing and slaughter of the Palestinian people more than 75 years on. Every Israeli knows exactly what is going on in Gaza. After all, their children soldiers keep posting videos online showing the latest crimes they have committed from blowing up mosques and hospitals to shooting randomly into homes. Pose, polls show all but a small minority of Israelis approve of the savagery that has killed many tens of thousands of Palestinians, including children. A third of them think Israel needs to go further in its ar barbarity. Today, Israeli TV show hosts debate about how much pain soldiers should be allowed to inflict by raping their Palestinian captives. Don't believe me? Huh? Well, well yeah, we, unfortunately... Yeah, we, right. So here's Niz Mahani, right? Shocking, Israel is quite possibly the only nation in the world where it is permissible and commonplace to go on TV and openly declare that the raping of prisoners okay. should be legitimate and official policy of the state and must be widely implemented. I told my friends that I don't give a rat's ass about what they do to a guy like that. What, is that what you really think? Unequivocally, yes. Wait, 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 I'll explain. Soldiers who are suspected in the criminal offense of rape, yes, of a cuffed prisoner, it doesn't interest you. Does the morality of all soldiers not interest you? By the way, they're not soldiers. In fact, they're not soldiers, they're criminals. I don't give a rat's ass what they did to that Hamas man. I always remember, first of all, the only thing that is a problem for me here is that it's not a regulated policy of the state to abuse their detainees. Any, any questions? No, but we've seen, you know, last week of basically Israel letting that guy who was essaying a prisoner, yes. they let him go free and he had his mask and he was proud of it. He had his mask on. And then he took, and he his took mask it off. off. And, I get, and I'm He's like, like Dude, nah, it me. Back on. You fucking demon, put that mask back on. It's all right. I'm you sure know, there's like, red triangle like, videos already. Um, but um, friend of the show, uh, Nuno, uh, tells us the U.S. State Department has known about mass rape in Israeli dungeons since before the Gaza genocide, and they said and did nothing. This is this is sinanin, right? So we're going to do that. We're going to do this. I was part of the human rights vetting process for arms going to Israel and a charity called Defense of Children International Palestine uh, drew our attention at the State Department to the sexual assault, actually the rape of a 13 year old boy that occurred in an Israeli prison in the Mosque of Bia in Jerusalem. Uh, we examined these allegations. Uh, we believe they were credible. We put them to, Israel, to uh, the government of Israel. And you know what happened the next day? The IDF went into the DCIP offices and removed all their computers and declared them a terrorist entity. Um, I think it is vital that atrocities not happen to anyone, not sexual atrocities, not sexual violations, not any kind of gross violation of human rights. So I think this is the first. So, yeah. Any questions? No. Yep. I mean, as the saying goes, every accusation is confession, right? Mm -hmm. What they say that Hamas does is actually the things that they do. So. So. If the existential fears of Israelis and Jews still require the murder, rape, and ethnic cleansing of Palestinians three quarters of a century on from the Holocaust, then we need to treat that trauma as the problem and refuse to indulge it any longer. The people of Gaza are fleeing their homes, or at least the small number who still have homes, not bombed to ruins. Not because they lack an attachment to Palestine, they are fleeing from one part of the cage Israel has created for them to another part of it, for one reason alone, because all of them, men, women, and children, are terrified of being slaughtered by an Israeli military at best, indifferent to their suffering and their fate. What's a caged bird do, Colin? You know? Maya Angelou? Poet Laureate? Know, I... You know? Um, you know, that, that bird sang, don't it? Isn't that how yeah. it works? Yeah. So 
Speaking of singing, Jonathan K. Cook, the official death toll in Gaza is a lie. The casualty yeah. numbers are far, far higher in my yeah, latest I mean, article. Said, I mean, we have said that. Like, yep. You know, the accounts are, it's, lo it's substantially low on purpose to make people believe that it's not so bad. Like, yeah. like, it, it, in comparison, I talked about the Rwandan genocide in 1994. That was close to a million. Like, you can make the argument like a million is a big number, and that in people's minds is going to be like, oh my god. Yeah. Like, you only can't can comprehend a million. Have, right. I would imagine that if if we were saying now that the death toll in Gaza was about that much, and I think people would take more. But because and it shouldn't even be the fact that let's assume that it is 40,000. It's not, but let's assume that it is. It's to, like it, it, it's basically, I said this back then. It's like the idea, and this is kind of like the shitty game that we're playing is how many should die before we can count it as a genocide. Like the numbers 40, 000, don't 50, lie, 50, 50, and they spell disaster for 125. you. Like, what if it were 12 people? Yeah, you know, like. It doesn't matter the number, it's really the matter of intent. And at the end of the day. So, it, but I think that's kind of like almost, I, and, I, and I hear myself being very cynical in this way, but it's almost like I want the number to increase. So it gives some more urgency to people that this is actually like something that has to be dealt with in the right way, or at least do something. But I think the idea that people are kind of uh, mismanaging the numbers, saying it's like around 40,000 now, is purposeful so that yeah. it doesn't give that kind of... Um, well, we may pull that Jonathan K. Cook article and cover it. Um, might be useful to add into something, um, if we haven't already. But... Um, so, K. Cook... Continues, no serious case can be made today that Israel is carrying out any of its crimes in Gaza from bombing civilians to starving them with regret or that its leading leaders seek the best for the Palestinian population. Israel is on trial for genocide at the world's highest court precisely because the judges there suspect it has the very worst intentions possible towards the Palestinian people. We have been lied to for decades about the creation of Israel it was always a settler colonial project, and like Shout other selects, yep. Sorry. Shout out to James Bowen. He called that out back in the sixties. Yep. Even Muhammad Ali that. called it that. Um, from the U.S. and Australia to South Africa and Algeria, right? It always viewed the native people as inferior, non-human, as animals, which they still do, and was bent on their elimination. So what is obviously true today was true then too. At Israel's birth, Israel was born in sin and it continues to live in sin. We in the West abetted its crimes in 1948 and we're still abetting them today. Nothing has changed except the excuses no longer work. Jonathan Cook is an indie media award-winning British journalist. So... Any questions, concerns, thoughts no. before we head to our next no. bit? Well, no. um, this is still happening. And the only reason we see these things still happening is because those cage birds still sing, Colin. But when that cage bird sings, what happens to them? Unfortunately. They are the, the unalived. Yes. Alive. So... Palestinian journalist visits Ismail Hanya's home in Gaza. Do you remember who that is? Ismail Hanya? Yes. Um, okay. Um, Hamas leader, correct? I do believe. Mm -hmm. In yes. Gaza to report on his death, Israel assassinated him too, the journalist. So Taraj, Tarek Say Hajaj, I hope that's how you pronounce your name. I'm sorry. Forgive my gringoness. Um... You know, over in Mondo Weiss. Uh, luckily, Sheer Post pulling it for us as well. Um, 
The assassination of Hamas Politburo chief Ismail Hania has led to a new turning point in the war in Gaza. A state of mourning is apparent. The assassination that took place in Tehran at dawn on Wednesday opened raw wounds for many in Gaza. It added to the ongoing cycle of fear and loss that has not ended since October 7th. The Qassam Brigades, the military wing of Hamas, okay, remember there's multiple factions, mourned Ismail Hanya and said in a statement that the assassination that took place in the heart of the Iranian capital was a critical and dangerous event that would take the battle to new dimensions and would have major repercussions on the region, as we have been seeing. Yeah. By targeting Ismail Hanya, Israel imagines that it could weaken the Hamas movement and the Palestinian resistance, and this is a great illusion. Mohammed al-Hindi, deputy head of Palestinian Islamic Jihad Political Bureau. What's the definition of jihad, Colin? Do you know that? Um, uh, look that up, boy. Is that, um, what, is that it? I think it's... I'll look it up. Yep, cool. Um, people in al shadi refugees camp west of Gaza City, where Ismail Hamya was born and raised, received the news early in the morning... His home there lays in ruins, bombed by Israel several months prior, and people had gathered around it to commemorate the slain leader. Children held up his picture while standing next to the rubble of his home. Uh, so jihad, based, it, well, in its basic terms, struggle. Yes. Um, one of the people who was there to capture the scene was a reporter with Al Jazeera, whose name was also Ismail. He had become a household name in his own right for anyone following the war's developments, especially in northern Gaza, where the fighting has been the most brutal. Al Jazeera correspondent Ismail al Ghul was assassinated by Israel in the line of duty as he covered the commemoration of Ismail Hanya. He and other journalists, who was a part of the team, were in a clearly identifiable press vehicle when a missile directly hit them. It killed both reporters and a young boy walking by. The strike left Ismail al Ghul's body headless. Jesus. So this was on their Instagram, right? Martyr journalist Ismail al Ghul, and to and do not think that those who were killed in the cause of God are dead. Rather, they are alive with their Lord being provided for. So this is a statement from him about others. Um so Anyway, um, the death of two Ismails within the span of a few hours has hit the people of Gaza hard. Israel is trying to take away from everything from Palestinians, even their pride in such leaders and journalist Mahmoud Essa, a journalist in northern Gaza who attended Al Ghul's funeral, told Mondo Weiss, The Israelis are sending us a message with every assassination. Look what happens to the journalist who goes to film Hanya's destroyed home. We've bombed his head off. So, in remembering Ismail, when the genocidal was war first started, Ismail al Ghul had resolved to remain in the north to cover the war, sending his wife and little daughter south to escape the fighting. Anas al-Sharif, a colleague of Ismail at Al Jazeera, appeared in a video standing beside Ismail's headless body, holding the press vest that he had worn at the time of his assassination. al Sharif said that despite his belief that a vest would protect him, it did nothing to save Ismail. Al-Sharif lamented that it has now stained with Ismail's blood and scattered remains. As journalists and others carried his body for the funeral, a rescue officer arrived with a plastic bag to collect pieces of Ismail's head for the burial, Mahmoud Essa told Mondo Weiss. The death of their colleague was a harsh reminder to journalists of the dangers faced by reporters in Gaza, forcing many to confront the grim realities of their profession one of the most poignant tributes that circulated was a letter Ismail had written to his daughter, Zaina. Um, on June 30th, Ismail posted the letter on his personal Facebook account. He expressed sorrow over not having seen her since the war began and lamented missing her growth and presence. Quote, at the beginning of the war, when my little girl Zaina was crawling and trying to say Baba, I was at my happiest. But as the war continued, my heart was heavy knowing she was displaced and far away, he wrote. Zayna would call out to me when she saw me on the screen saying, Baba, it was a wonderful feeling, but it didn't last. For nine months, she asked, where is Baba? The pain of not being with her and watching her grow was immense. He concluded, 
but we find solace in knowing that we sacrificed everything for this cause and this message. So, closing thoughts, Colin? I mean, what else can be said than what we haven't said? Yeah. I think at this point, way too many times. And... And again, I say it, like, and kind of going off of this, and this this story was probably more widely reported, but like uh, the two, the twin newborns that were uh, unalived uh, a couple of days ago, they were four days old. Um, they were just born, and then the dad went to get the... Um, their birth certificates and basically found them and his wife right gone which we'll probably cover next week um or i will so i think it, yeah. um, but it's but again it's just the idea of how monstrous do you have to be and like and this is what gets me so pissed off about people who are getting so like people were willing to hold the line for biden but because now we got a new toy that's kamala harris who seemingly cares that people are like oh it's okay like oh, oh like warts uh, uh warts is progressive he's done some progressive stuff and he allegedly cares about gaza so things are going to be okay and it's like you're selling yourselves out for essentially crumbs that aren't even promised to you. But because, like, again, it's not Biden, then you guys think, like, and again, it just shows, like, these people have not been serious, oh, have not been serious about what's been happening in Gaza. Because if you've had that same heat for Biden, you should have even more heat for Kamala right now because yeah. and like and pe and I'm getting tired of people saying well Trump is going to be worse well Gaza might not exist by November like Trump may not have to do a damn thing if he gets in August in in office but come January Gaza would be completely destroyed by that but you're worried about Trump like how about worrying about the people right now and actually holding them and the the only solace that I have right now is, and I think I mentioned this last week, is that colleges are going to be starting up again in a couple of weeks. I'm hearing murmurs that a lot more protests at colleges are going to start up again. Yeah, you know, I even see like just now that um, uh, Kamala got the business at an event in New York. Yeah, so these people should not be comfortable at the, none of them should no. be comfortable like and don't buy their gaslight either every they're making us every un, every day they make us uncomfortable every fucking day why should they walk around with the privilege of not being able to worry about shit because of their position like if we're not comfortable they shouldn't be comfortable no and especially for the people in gaza who are living right now in fear of wondering if they're going to make it to the next day. Like, it's just really disgusting how people, even in our space, can sell out on account of allegedly progressive issues, which I said on Twitter, it's not even progressive. It's like a lot of developed countries have the shit that we still don't have. It's just yeah. that we're so fucking backwards and we're just so bought with all these corporations that are trying to make money versus actually trying to help people that America is the shithole that it is in those in that regard. So I don't want to hear people basically being like, you know, they haven't promised us anything. They haven't done anything worthy of your vote, at least to me now. So really, you shouldn't be giving them your support. That's my opinion. You should be giving them your support because they haven't offered anything yet. And well, you, but we know what they're going to offer us is still going to be like more the same incremental 
status quo bullshit that we've had to deal with for the last four years. Yeah. Well, I wanted to close on uh, this footage here where press in Gaza are taking off their vests because it makes them a target. Um, right. So I feel like that's pretty powerful footage right there myself personally but and the fact that they're still willing to do their job without it you know right so i don't know you know support as best you can divest from anything that gives israel money as much as possible you know like make them uncomfortable as colin was saying um which, you know, we certainly make YouTube uncomfortable. So if you want to help our <laughs> our efforts, um, you can go to codashfee.com slash indie news network, take that camera app on your phone and scan that QR code on your screen. You know, otherwise just try to get this to people. Share the video. We're heavily suppressed. Any little bit helps, you know. Um like and subscribe. I don't know if that does anything, but Supposedly, that's what we're told. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think. Allegedly, this engagement helps us. So, you know, we're trying to get to 3K, you know, keep those, keep that ball rolling. Try to get bigger that, so we don't have as many problems to deal with. But, you know, otherwise, thanks for watching.